So far, I use a sensor here to measure shank position and convert position into velocity on the microprocessor. I was not measuring damper position. Instead, I estimated it based on the shank position. That is changing. I will be adding a sensor here to measure damper position directly and send to a Teensy for processing. What is so cool is that I can also use damper up and down velocity for my piano. I'm using the Kawai KG3C action. The damper sensors will go here on the back of the piano, but first I remove those red pads so the sensors get a good signal. Tedious. Same as shanks, I added white stickers to increase the signal strength. For the shanks, I use individual sensors. That is a lot of work to align and mount them all. So for the dampers, I initially planned to combine on a single board, but alignment is difficult and individual sensors are flexible for any piano. In case I come across a new Steinway D action for sale at $1.99. Okay, out with that idea. And trying to reuse the existing frame, which was never intended to be for damper sensors. It just might work. Before going further, the design. Here is an action, shank sensors, one of performance or single board architecture. I need to make a new board. I call it the damper position processor. Same sensors as for shanks, lots of wires. The DPP can send data over ethernet or MIDI. Introducing, drum roll, the DPP. Instead of a parallel architecture as my other boards, I am going to try a single analog to digital converter. Use analog muxes to combine the sensor signals and a teensy, of course. The board supports 96 inputs. The six 16 to 1 muxes select data for the 8 to 1 mux. That goes to the ADC. And in theory, this system can sample at over 10,000 samples per second. But how fast do I need to go? Here is a hammer motion signal I recorded. Previous videos explain much of this. The rise time is for getting note velocity. Hammer falling is related to the damper position. I need a threshold to know when to damp the sound. And free falling takes about so I can sample the damper position relatively slowly, but I chose 1,000 samples per second to keep latency low. For testing, solder on a single 16 to 1 mux, the 8 to 1 mux, ADC, and, as always, a teensy. Here is my first test of the system. Shown on scope are chip select 1 MHz SPI clock and data. I am toggling two analog inputs between ground and 3.3 volts. I expect to see all 1s and all zeros on the 12 bits of SPI data. Why is the data signal not going to ground? Even stranger, when I connect a scope probe to the analog input, the data does go to ground, but the value is noisy. Ah, here is the problem. I'm using one regulator per 16 inputs. And see previous videos for power strategy. Initially, I soldered one 16 to 1 mux, but the ADC runs off this regulator. It's amazing this worked at all. Oops. Try again. Now it works. For this firmware, it takes approximately 413 microseconds to sample all 96 inputs. That works out to 2,421 samples per second. This time, a 10 MHz S clock, and with plenty of time for Teensy to switch channels. Next, I need to make some sensors. See previous videos for details. Wow, lots of views. I am increasing R2 since the new ADC accepts a full 3.3 volt range. Test it. Use MIDI to ping a piano sound when the damper threshold is crossed. Ethernet to send data to my computer. Various debug messages. One lonely sensor. Getting the spacing just right. Next question to solve. 
How to align damper position and hammer velocity data. Separate MIDI and Ethernet does not seem viable. I think I need to connect these boards. With CAN bus, I can send 64 bits of damper data in approximately 120 microseconds. That is channel time. Here is a test of transmit and receive. Transmit always takes 2 microseconds of teensy. Receive is either 15 microseconds when buffer is empty or 2 when available. So that should work. Hey, CAN bus is already on the new board. Test with a CAN bus receiver on breadboarded teensy. I am sending 01234567 same as my password, and the receiver is getting these values. Cool! One final feature of the new board. I had space for a display, so why not? Hey, it's wired on the board already. Testing all board components. Muxes, EDC, sensor, CAN bus, Ethernet, MIDI, TFT. Hmm, that TFT takes a big chunk of processor. When the text goes off screen, I can sample at the target 1 millisecond, but it takes 8 milliseconds to draw the text. I designed for this in a previous video and used a coprocessor. So for this board, the display is OK for things like setup, but probably not for real-time data. I can't stop thinking about this. On my performance boards, I was also displaying images on the TFT, but it did not work on this new board. After what felt like days of debugging, I learned that the second SPI I tried to use will not work, so it is PCB modifications again. Now I can watch my previous YouTube videos while playing the dampers. Here are the DPP and a sensor attached to piano. Okay. I've learned a lot. I think I am going to spin this PCB before I go further. 